welcome yin yogis to this edition of Christopher's Yin Yoga under the full strawberry moon of Lunation 1255. Early Heaven Bhagwa Trigram is Heaven as well. On the solstice, the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. Curiously enough, that in China is considered Earth, which is Yin. However, the full moon and the solstice are the full expression of the Yang polarity. Of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, as we are experiencing the height of summer, celestially, they're experiencing the depths of winter. It's a dynamic that is reflected in the Tai Chi symbol, the Yin Yang symbol, the two Paisleys chasing each other. Indicating there's always some kind of balance and interaction and connection between them, especially because with each, the black or the white Paisley, there's an element of its opposite contained within. A celestial cycle, a cycle of life. Something that often goes overlooked in the day to day. We're exposed to cycles all the time. Various phases that repeat. Paying attention to them sometimes can be beneficial. Class this evening is a very young class. In fact, since today is the most young day of the year, this class will be especially young. Here we are at the top of the inhale. Noticing your position on the mat, where your head is over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips. Just find balance. Notice those points of contact between yourself and the mat. Notice the differences in pressure. And then body parts touching other body parts and exposed skin. Notice the differences in temperature as well as the expansion, the contraction of your abdomen with each inhale and exhale. And the friction of the air flowing in and out through the nostrils. Notice the ambient sounds. Inside the room, outside the room, and perhaps internally. And notice whatever is within your field of view whether your eyes are open or closed. Making note of these sensations. Remaining connected as you flow through the class. Now checking in with how you're feeling at the beginning of the practice and maybe setting some intent for your time on the mat this evening. Postures are many, the duration is short, here we go, the first one is a deep squat. Have your blocks nearby. Settle into the posture. Place your hands on the mat or the floor. Let your chin fall toward your chest.
Now leaving your hands on the mat, raise the hips, coming into a forward fold. Just noticing how this feels at this point. And then from here, stepping back with the right leg, coming into a deep lunge on the left, flexing fully into the left ankle, raising the upper body into dragon posture, arching your back. Relax the muscles, sink deeply into the posture. You can support yourself a little bit with the hands as needed. Postures are short, but they are relatively intense. Bringing the hands to the inside of the left leg. Deciding whether you want to stay there for gecko or come down to your elbows. If you'd like, let your thigh fall out to the side.
distancing the body to some degree, at least enough so that you can reach your block. And then put the block somewhere under your left hip. From there, take the left foot and move it over to the right and lower the left leg toward the mat so the hip goes onto the block. Roll the right hip forward. Try and square your hips to the mat and then raise the upper body. Arching the back for swan posture. Another strong back extension while gently preparing the left hip for what's coming next, sleeping swan. We'll move into the next posture, which is sleeping swan. All you'll do is lay your chest over your thigh, your, uh, your left thigh. And here we go. go in as far as you can. Whatever your range is, is whatever it is. And that's the thing about yin yoga. The postures aren't all about a specific alignment, nor the full aesthetic expression. It's whatever you can do. And it's said in yin yoga circles, if you're feeling it, you're doing it.
raise the upper body. Bring the hands to the sides of the mat and tuck the toes to the rear. Lift the knee and then bring the left leg back to meet the right. Move your block out of the way and hang out in a plank position. Being that this is a very young yin class, we'll be here for several minutes. I'm kidding. Or am I? Slowly lowering to the mat. Bring your forehead to the mat. Hands and arms by your sides, palms down. Now, on the inhale, lift your arms, your upper body, and your legs, and count backwards from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then bring your elbows forward, support the upper body. Sphinx posture. Just a moment, you'll lower your forehead to the mat. Take a breath. From there, press back into a child pose. Take two breaths, and then come to hands and knees. Forehead to the mat, take a breath. Press back, child pose, take two breaths.
Vietnamese. Three cat cows. Inhale, arching your back, looking up. Exhale, rounding your back, looking toward your navel. Inhale, arching, looking up. Exhale, rounding, looking toward your navel. Inhale. Exhale. Coming to neutral. If you have long arms, you won't need them. If you don't, bring your blocks by the side of the mat and hop through. The legs outstretched, folding forward for caterpillar. are bent, feet are flat on the floor. Take your block, decide whether you want low, medium, or high. Lift the hip, slip the block beneath. Top edge of the block goes right there at the top edge of the pelvis. Reach the legs out. Let the thighs roll out to either side. Bring the hands and arms out by either side, or you can reach them overhead for a supported back extension.
one knee, then the other. Feet come flat to the mat, lift the hips, slide the block out from beneath, lower the hips. Draw the thighs up alongside the rib cage. And from there, rock forward. So your feet come to the mat. From behind, press yourself up into a deep squat. And settle in. to some degree, lifting the hips, folding forward. Now sending the left leg back behind you, lunging deeply into the right ankle. the upper body, arching the back for dragon.
side of the right leg on the mat. You can stay here or you can come down to your elbows for a gecko. And if you'd like, let the thigh, the right thigh fall out to the side. the upper body enough to reach out and grab your block if you need it positioning it so that it's more or less under the hip and then move that right foot over to the left side of the mat lower the hips onto the block or the hip onto the block take this hip square it to the mat if you can and raise the upper body for one.
and then lowering your upper body. So your chest folds across your thigh for sleeping swan. to the outsides of the mat, tucking the toes of the rear leg, lifting its knee, bringing the right leg back to meet, moving your block out of the way if you've got it there under your, or you had it there under your hip, finding that plank position again, hanging out. We're going to add a little spice to this in just a moment. to do eight hip dips. That means with everything else staying the same, you're going to drop your hips and then raise your hips. Down and up, down and up, down and up. Get ready. Get set. Here we go. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, 
up, back to plank position, and then lower the hips toward the mat, point the toes, let the heels fall out to either side. Hip bones are off the mat, slightly above. Shrug your shoulders, draw them back, open the chest to the wall in front of you. Seal posture. Pressing back to a child pose, taking two breaths, then coming to hands and knees. Inhale, arching, looking up. Exhale, rounding, looking toward your navel. Inhale, arching, looking up. Exhale, rounding, looking toward your navel. Inhale, arching, looking up. Exhale, rounding, looking toward your navel. Coming to neutral. Grabbing your blocks if you need them and hopping through. This time, instead of caterpillar, butterfly. 
bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees go out to either side, and fold forward. the upper body. Lying back on your mat. Going for another supported back extension. If you used one of the lower settings of your block, this time go higher if you can. Lifting the hips, slipping the block beneath, reaching the legs out, bringing the hands and arms out by either side.
reaching up and grabbing hold of the balls of the feet. Stirrup posture. fall into touch, taking a few breaths. Reaching the legs out lengthwise. Thighs roll out to either side, bring the hands and arms out by either side, finding a symmetrical, comfortable position on the mat, adjusting as needed to get any bunched clothing out from under you and relax into the final posture. 
pentacle, breathing easily.
as you're beginning to return to ordinary awareness, start by wiggling your fingers and your toes, rotating your wrists and your ankles, moving your arms and your legs. And with a deep yawning inhale, reaching with both hands through the wall behind you, both feet toward the wall in front, lengthening your body. Then rolling over onto your right side, curling up into a fetal position, giving yourself a few moments more to fully absorb the benefits of the practice before getting on with your evening. Now drawing in through your nose a full inhale on the exhale, pressing up to a seated position. Bringing both hands into the lap, right and left, thumbs touching. Checking in with how you're feeling now at the end of the practice compared to how you're feeling at the beginning and revisiting any intent you may have set. And holding that yang inhale until tomorrow where the yin exhale begins, bringing both hands of the heart to Anjali Mudra. The light in me sees the light in you. Namaste.